I'm Dave Witt from uh, Akron AUP. I teach at the University of Akron in uh, Akron, Ohio. When I got my job back in the 80s, um, I felt that it was my duty to go on to committee meetings and to, to do my part for the campus and to run for faculty senate and be on accreditation steering committee teams whenever possible. And I began to notice about 15 years, I might not be as smart as I think I, it took me a long time to realize that my committees would make recommendations and we would work real hard to, uh, to, to, to try to help guide the institution and we would just be ignored. And then at the same time, the university would tell us they had no money and the pay raises weren't coming as well. I didn't get in it for the money, but you'd kind of like to be able to, you know, take your grandchildren for ice cream once in a while and those sorts of things. And so I, I actually was looking for some kind of uh, more effective way to use my time to the benefit of myself and my colleagues. And uh, I contacted our local, our AUP chapter. And so I said, isn't there some way we could address some of these issues through AUP? And so they actually asked one of the uh, Department of Organizing staff members to come talk to us. This only took about a month, you know, from the time I asked the question until they, we have a meeting. And things were getting pretty tough at our, uh, uh, at our university, and people were getting upset at decisions that were being made. So the turnout was pretty good. There were about suddenly 60 people in the room that day. And the organizer came to talk about salaries and benefits. And someone asked the question, is there some way we could organize as a, as a, a labor union? And so he folded up his little notes that he was going to talk about. And he put them in his pocket. And then he just kicked right into his, here's what you have to do to organize. And this is why you should do it. And that day, 40 people joined AAUP just on the basis of that talk. And it, it was a pretty stunning thing. And so then we, we scheduled a, a meeting to talk about organizing the next month. And we voted that meeting to, uh, to launch an organizing campaign. We, we did this. We thought we were being open. Apparently, the university had no idea we were doing this. This is in November, then Christmas comes, the holidays are here, and so a group of five of us with the charge of fleshing out this organizing campaign, we met over the holidays every week, four or five times, and we came up with a an FAQ, you know, a list of questions that people ask about should we organize or not, and we started talking to our colleagues at Kent State and at Wright State about what questions are going to come up, how should we do this, and then we started getting advice from the national staff. We come back in January and we we launched our card campaign. The administration still didn't even know we were doing this. And by the time we had our January meeting, now this is November, December, January, we had 30% of the cards signed before the administration even knew we were organizing. And we had our big meeting and we invited the press because uh, the Collective Bargaining Congress people told us you should have a press conference. We, this is my first press conference. So, and we printed up a banner with our website, our little fledgling website, so that because they knew they'd take the picture of that would be in the newspaper perhaps. And we were off and running, and we had 50% of our cards. We, we, we announced that we wanted to have well over 50% before we would even ask for a, an election. So we knew we had the election won when we finally said we're through with the card campaign. And that was actually more fun. This is 20 years into my career. I was having more fun at my job and actually was teaching better and a little more energized about everything than I had been for the previous 10 years. This was 2001 is when we started our card campaign. By 2002, that year was over, we had our, our, our cards filed and we had our election and then we went down <laughs> the dark and terrible path of trying to negotiate our contract, which was also tiring and difficult and just more fun than people should be having. Doing. We had probably a pretty bitter contract negotiation. It went on for 26 months, which is about 10 months longer than most of them do. 
and uh, I was the webmaster at the time, so I was keeping track of, of, of contract articles that were getting uh, tentatively agreed to and the ones that were still outstanding. And at, at the end, when we finally finished up, we got every single thing we asked for that the, the administration ultimately turned around on every single thing, except domestic partner benefits, which they're probably going to do this time, right? And I thought that was a pretty good, good track record. It just took us a little longer. They were stu more stubborn than, than some, I think. Yeah. And, then, and then while we've had, we've, we've had our contract, we're going in negotiation of our second contract now, and uh, in that time, we filed grievances that we don't talk about very much. Some of them are private matters, but we've we've saved people's uh, jobs because they, they a couple of people got got sick, and and the university would like to just have them go on disability and leave, and that would make a real difference to their retirement. And and we were able because we're a union, we we're able to to let them come back to work when their doctor says. Many of the things that were a problem in the past, now we have the, the administration listens to us a little more closely than they might have before, and they don't come to the point of a grievance or, a, or in need of some arbitration or something. We can talk these things out. Where before, you had nobody to go to but the administration who wasn't going to listen anyway. Our provost stopped Steve Abbey and I one day after our accreditation steering committee meeting and she wanted to make a point of telling us that while she was opposed to the faculty unionizing when we started after a couple of years of implementing the contract she thought this was the best thing that could have happened to the institution now she might have just been shining us on and she's done that in the past and she's really good at it but I think she was telling the truth she said people know what to expect now it's in black and white you can't believe how much easier my job is because of this. One of the things that, that faculty don't understand is that whether you're going to organize or not, when you stand up for yourself and, and when you stand up for your colleagues, you feel better about everything. You know, it, It's a liberating thing to do. Many times we're our own worst enemy and we don't ask questions because we're afraid of how we might look, but we're, we're supposed to be smart folks. You know, and we all have good ideas, and if we articulate those in the right setting, it does nothing but do, but good things for us. And we get phone calls. We never get phone calls from people that don't like what we have to say. They all say, "Way to go! That was great." You know, I wish I could say that. Every time someone tells me, "I wish I could do something like that," I just grab their hand and we come to a little chapter meeting and we find a job for them to do so that they can be part of this. It's actually a gift we're giving them. I think that's one of the problems that, that we have is many times people think when the union asks you to do something or your chapter asks you that it's going to cost you time and money and effort and really what it is is, is a little present that you're getting. I find that you meet a better class of people at AUP. I come to, to the meetings or summer institute and I'm happy the whole time I'm here, even when they have to talk about budget problems or difficult times, it's fun to be here. I go back to my campus sometimes and people are still carping on the same old, you know, picayune kinds of problems when there's a whole big world of, uh, where you can make a difference. I've watched this happen over and over and over again. We get people involved in the union and they're, they're better colleagues. And that's just all I got to say about that is they just, they have a good time at what they're doing. Suddenly your anger and your, your uh, uh, frustration has a place to go, you know, you feel effective. Even if we fail, and sometimes we can't convince our administration, not that we ever stop trying, and eventually they come around.